Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. The purpose of this video is to uh, demonstrate how to find displacement from a velocity graph. So what we're looking at here, <clears throat> we've got a velocity graph that's going to describe the motion of this vehicle. So this vehicle apparently it starts from rest, right, because at t equals zero the velocity is zero. It accelerates to 30 feet per second over a five second interval from t equals 5 to t equals 11 seconds the car is traveling at a constant velocity of 30 feet per second and then the person the driver apparently applies the brakes and brings that car to rest over a three second interval here from 11 to 14 seconds so what we're going to try to calculate here is how far this car traveled oops during this time frame you know that's what the displacement is the uh, change in position or the delta x <clears throat> now Everybody inherently already knows how to do this. I usually just have to kind of point out that fact. Before we actually work this example, I want to go through and just talk about another super quick example. Imagine that somebody gets in this car and they drive the car at 50 mile per hour for three hours. Now, in physics class, you know, I always ask people, well, how far did the car go? And, and everybody, or pretty much everybody I've ever asked, usually can come to the conclusion that that car traveled 150 miles during this time frame. I want to take a moment here and, and look at that. What does that look like graphically? So I'm going to draw just another graph off to the side here, if you'll humor me. Draw it over here. So just a quick sketch here. All right, so in my short example here, the velocity of the car, 50 mile per hour, which would be written mile uh, over hour, three hours. And in this example, you know, the velocity is assumed to be constant. We're not talking about the, the few seconds it takes to get the car, maybe 30 seconds to get it up to 50 or, or the braking time. Let's just talk about the time where it's going down the highway, 50 mile an hour for three hours. In that case, the velocity would be constant. <clears throat> that would give us a horizontal graph up to this point. And you'll notice that the 150 miles is equal to the product of the 50 mile per hour times the time, three hours. And a very important thing to recognize is that on this graph, this area right here is what this calculation gives. <clears throat> the 50 mile per hour times three hours is giving the area of this rectangle. Now, uh, that's a really important fact of life here, that in general, displacements, or I'll say delta x's, now it doesn't matter if it's a delta x or a delta y or delta z, it's whatever variable you happen to be using to uh, represent uh, the position, can be found by area under the velocity curve. Now really, I should probably say area bound uh, by the velocity curve. For now, in this video, I'm just going to keep this to all positive examples where the velocity stays uh, positive. You know, this car doesn't turn around. So the fact that over here we had a constant velocity to do the calculation doesn't matter. This principle still applies whether the velocity is constant or not. So. When we look at this velocity graph, again, this car in the first five seconds here, it was accelerating, which is fine. This area in green bound here is going to give us the displacement of the car during the first five seconds. This blue area right here is going to give us the displacement during the next six seconds. And I'll do this in red. Finally, this red area here is going to give us the displacement during the next three seconds, and then we'll just add them all up. So I'm going to take a moment here and get rid of some things I don't need, Good. and then we'll go through the calculation. Don't really need this anymore. All right. <clears throat> so the displacement of this car, oops, I'm going to write that in black, I guess. Right, is going to be the sum of the three displacements. First, the green one, well, or first the displacement represented by the green area, then the displacement represented by the blue area, then the displacement represented by the red area. So that first term, because this is a triangular area here, and the area of a triangle is one half base times height, that first displacement is equal to one half, and then the base is this distance, five seconds, times the height, 
which I'm getting right off the graph, 30 feet per second. So this is the area bound by the, uh, or this is equal to the green area here, the, the area bound under this curve during the first five seconds. <clears throat> All right. Next, we'll do the blue. All right. So this is now just a rectangle. Whoops, excuse me a moment. All right, back, sorry about that. Um, all right, uh, blue area here. Now this is a rectangle, uh, base is six seconds. And then the height here is 30 feet per second. Order here doesn't matter. Whether it's 30 feet per second times six or six times 30, it doesn't matter at all. So this product gives us the area in blue. And then the last area here, this is a triangular area, the area in red. So because it's a triangle, one half, the base, now don't use the 14 here, the base is this distance, which is three seconds times the height, which again is 30 feet per second. And these three terms added together, together would get us the uh, total displacement. So I'm gonna go ahead here and maybe clean this up a little bit here. Um, let's see, this can be written 15 times five. That one's gonna give us 75 feet. This product is going to give us 180 feet. And this product here, let's see, 90 times a half is 45. Whoops, that's a plus, plus 45 feet. And then we'll just add these together here. So let's see, uh, these two, seven, 120 feet and 180 feet. Uh, 300 feet, I think, is what I get out of that. So it's looking like this car traveled uh, 300 feet while this is occurring. Now, as a little sidestep here, you know, a real common question to ask is what is the average velocity on the time interval? And again, you know, bar here means average. So during the first half of the trip, you know, the car is traveling between, you know, 0 and 30 feet per second, but it's varying. During the second half, the average, uh, the car is traveling at 30 feet per second constant during the the, uh, I shouldn't say second half, but roughly the uh, next third roughly. And then during the last part of the trip here, you know, the velocity is changing. Now you might think the average velocity might be 30 and the answer is no, or maybe it's zero and the answer is no. Um, the average velocity is definitely somewhere between zero and 30. Here's how we can calculate it. All right, velocity is equal to delta x over delta t. On the interval given, the total delta x is 300 feet. And then the total delta T is 14 seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and take a moment here and calculate that. All right, and I get about 21.4, right, approximately 21.4 feet per second. Now, the an average velocity calculation is gonna depend on uh, what time intervals we're talking about. So in the example I just did, I, I did the entire interval. But let's say we wanted the average velocity maybe the first five. Well, then we would take the green area here, that's our delta x during that time interval, and we would just divide it by five, uh, five seconds. Or maybe we want the average velocity during the first 11 seconds. Well, in that case, the delta x we would use would be the total delta x during the 11 seconds, that would be that area and then we would divide by the 11 seconds and so forth. So when you're finding an average velocity, you gotta be mindful of the time interval that you're uh, talking about. If we wanted the average velocity during the red time interval, we would take the red area here, which is this term, and then divide by the delta t, which would be three seconds and so forth. So again, the purpose of this video is how to find displacement from a velocity graph. The answer to that is by finding the area bound under the graph. Sometimes it will be a rectangular area. Sometimes it'll be a triangular area. Sometimes it might be some sort of messy looking curve. And I'm gonna make other videos to talk about how you work those. Um, but for now, uh, in this particular video, I think that that's probably enough. Hope this video helps demonstrate these concepts. Have a great day.